Our first talk in this session will be uh, by John Olivero okay. and Charles Barth through the eyes of a frequent visitor to LASP. Um, now for something completely different. Uh, I've never been a student at CU. I've never worked at LASP. I'm not a member of the Barth family. <laughs> I'm just somebody who likes to come and visit LASP and I've done it often over the years. And so I, I just wanted to add my perspective from that point of view of seeing Charles Barth and his laboratory in, through the eyes of somebody who just comes in and stays for usually a short amount of time. Um, my story starts in 1970 when I first met Charles Barth. At the time I was a graduate student at the University of Michigan and trying to finish up my dissertation and my advisor Paul Hayes was spending the summer at LASP which is probably a smart thing to do so I had to come to him in order to uh, uh, work on my dissertation and while I was here he introduced me to Charles Barth and I got a, a mini tour of the lab back then well I finished up my dissertation I moved on to do a postdoc at the University of Florida with Alex Green. It turns out Alex Green was a contrib was someone who had worked or at least crossed paths with Charlie Barth in the past, probably when Barth was at JPL, and I think maybe Alex Green was at uh, Aerospace Corporation. In fact, Barth contributed a chapter to Green's book, The Middle Atmosphere: Science and Technology. So. Even in my postdoc, I was sort of exposed to Charlie Barth. Well, in order to get to the next stage, I have to wander through the fact that I went off and, and uh, started being a faculty at Penn State. But, you know, these things, these webs, eventually tie you back to where you, you start. And uh, as it turned out, I got interested in the observations of what we later called polar mesospheric clouds from Ogo 6 by Donahue and his group, and I started working on that, and eventually had uh, three grad students work on it. Now that was very important because in the early SME period, Gary Thomas was, got very interested in the idea of trying to use SME to look for polar mesospheric clouds, and so since I was one of the few people who had spent time trying to, to look at them with satellite data before, he contacted me and I was able to give him uh, copies of all of that work. And then later we met at AGU and he started showing me some SME data. It was very, very interesting. Well, that could have just ended there. But another plan ended. I was at that point poised to go on sabbatical to the Rutherford Appleton lab. But uh, going to England with a family of six turned out to be much more expensive and I could work out. So Gary says, why don't you come to LASP instead if you're gonna have a sabbatical? And I think here is where Barth stepped in and provided some very generous support that allowed me to come and spend a sabbatical year here, 1983 to 1984. Now, to be here in those days was a wonderful experience to see how science really should work when you have a whole team of people working. It's true we were operating out of the facility at the 55th Street which was uh, nothing like last <laughs> facilities today. It was a little bit on the rough side but the uh, camaraderie made up for it. <coughs> this was a wonderful time to work with people like Gary Thomas and Dave Rush and Ryan Saunders, who we lost many, many years ago. And I got to meet people like uh, Ian Stewart and Bruce Joukowsky and Larry Esposito and many, many more of you here during that time period. Uh, I got to see how a science team really works. It was really my first exposure to seeing how you operate a satellite. And the fact that the students were running the POC just blew me away. I mean, this was just an amazing thing to see. Uh, it also, being in Boulder, it was a wonderful time for me to actually have some 
collaborations with Susan Solomon and Rolando Garcia, which was uh, very useful too. Well, from that point on, starting in 1985, and for many, many years after that, I was a frequent visitor to LAS. I would come during the summer, two weeks, four weeks, sometimes six weeks. I came so often that they automatically set up an office for me. It was Barth's old office on campus. And when I came, his name sign came down and my name sign went up. <laughs> year after year, that happened. And let me tell you, that's quite a thrill <laughs> to have Charles Barth's office. You know, it's just absolutely amazing. And over the years, I've had a chance to dabble a little bit with other things that have gone on here, mostly working with polar mesospheric clouds, uh, a little bit of uh, collaboration with Snowy, and then still ongoing things now with AIM. But let me uh, close this rather short talk by just telling you the highlight of my sabbatical year at last. It happened when Charles Barth was summoned to NASA headquarters to defend SME. Now for many of you, you may not realize that SME was in trouble, but SME broke a lot of rules and it made the people very mad. It made the people at Goddard, particularly the ozone people, very unhappy. And they kept chirping, chirping on the people at NASA headquarters and we had to come and defend it. Well, Charles decided to bring two non-LASP scientists with him to Washington for this presentation. Susan Solomon and me. And let me tell you, that was one of the greatest honors of my life. And then if we have time later on, I'll tell you what that presentation in Washington was like. But thank you. Anybody have questions for John? Yeah, could you tell us about this meeting in Washington? <laughs> <laughs> have a few drinks first. <laughs> well, you got five more minutes. <laughs> well, Shelby Tilford was supposed to be the person there, but he, for some reason he wasn't. And Bob Watson was there. Did I, most of you know Bob Watson? Yes. Well, this was this is 1984. Bob Watson was in his bad boy phase. He was not a very nice person. He's gone on to do a lot of good things for science, but in those days he was a little rough. And here we are in this room. And there's a big table, and behind the table are a number of scientists from, that I recognize from Goddard, and in the middle is, is Bob, with both feet up, and the table is strewn with potato chips <laughs> and cans of Coke, and he's not treating this with any respect at all. And I'll tell you, it was rough. It was kind of rough. But Charles never lost his composure, and, and he set a good example, and the rest of us carried on. And SME carried on, so I guess we won in the end. I don't remember what I talked about. <laughs> I really don't. I, I, I'm afraid I didn't have much to report. One of the things that I worked on when I was here was the IR instrument. And, and, and I pushed poor Ryan Sanders awfully hard because I believed we could, we could find something in this bag of poop. There had to be a pony in there somewhere. And I worked, we worked very hard on that. But never got an awful lot to show for it. Any other questions, comments? Okay, thank you again.